calling them dimensions one and two. So dimension one is something like horizontal on a page, and dimension two is something like vertical on a page, or we get by convention, say like that. So we have two cursors, the green cursor, probably the, whoops, so, uh, Oh, we have a blue cursor, which stays in the middle on the right, and I can move it over there, and I don't know why it's jingling like this. Maybe if I close a little bit for a moment, it'll help. Okay. And the green cursor, which stays in the middle on the left, uh, and wanders around. Now, why do the two windows look different? Because the, the window on the right is the road view, and the window on the left is the stretch vanishing view. Why do you want more than one view? Well, for all sorts of reasons, and I'll show you now. But first, let's look at let's, why, why would we want to depart from a simple table in which you have the same number of rows in every column and the same number of columns in every row? The answer is the data is intrinsically, or as a rule, irregular, and you want to be able to deal with irregularities. So, in this system, you're able to create a new structure. Uh -huh. You're able to create a new structure, which goes in all directions. And, um, for example, up there, over there. <clears throat> now, why would you want this? Well, I'll be showing you. But you notice, for example, that these two, the blue cursed, the accursed blue scat cell and the accursed green cell are connected and were connected before. And when we made these extras, they stayed connected. That's the little curly line. So let's take a concrete example. Let us consider the royal families of Europe. Now this data was put in by my colleague Adam Moore. And here we see one possible reason for having two views. The row view on the right emphasizes the regularity of these columns, and the stretch vanishing view on the left allows us to see every character in a cell. So there are different reasons for having, for wanting more than one you. I'm sorry about that. You're, getting, or you're not getting the gadget that you're right. <clears throat> so, let's... You see this main column that both the, that both the cursors are in uh, has the names of various royal personages, and over to the side we have their titles. But this other column, for example, I use to connect the different kings of Denmark. So that means I can jump quickly to the different without having to go through the whole of the central column. Ah, oh, you see, there are many structures here that we're still only discovering. But basically, it's just cells connected according to the following rule. The top of your cell can connect to the bottom of any cell. The left side of any cell can connect to the right side of any cell, and so on in as many dimensions as you like, and you can create new dimensions at any time. Now this gives you both the customary row and column sorts of table and all sorts of things you've never seen before that I can't begin to get into. But let's look at some of the, some of the uses. Let's, let's go to the current monarch of the United Kingdom. Here she is, Her Majesty Elizabeth II, Queen of Great Britain, Great Britain, Great Britain. So on dimension one, we have attached the title. Now, let us pivot in the left hand in the yeah the left hand window to dimension date horizontally, which is three dimension date, and we see that Elizabeth was born in 1926. Unlike Edward VIII, we have no birth and death date; we have only a birth date for Elizabeth because she's still on the throne. Now let us find out more information about Elizabeth by pivoting in the right hand window. Let's go to dimension marriage and see if she's married. Well, we know the answer. There he is, Philip. And Philip Bunkbat, translated from Battenberg, and now let us pivot vertically to dimension children. And there they are, the children of Elizabeth, Philip, Charles, and Anne, and Edward. Now what happens if we switch to another view, the vanishing view? By Joe, we have a family tree that we can traverse by walking the cursor all around. And one Victoria. And here is the Victoria we all know. We don't have them. <clears throat> anyway, this is, this is, this is uh, 
that shows you how we got a family tree, but we didn't create a family tree program. We just put the information in the signature. So this shows how multiple dimensions, multiple discrete dimensions, uh, can do all kinds of things for you. And I won't give you any more of a hard sell on that, except to say that in Xanadu space, which we saw before. Okay, now this is the first program in which zigzag was actually used as a data mechanism. So instead of creating the various tables and semaphores and dot and cues that are conventional with software of this magnitude and complexity, the programmer Rob Smith used zigzag as the interior mechanism and discovered, he confirmed my conjecture that yes, programming, a big program, simple. So for example, each of these pages has a zigzag cluster which states its position and angle. Each of these links of transclusion simply has each subpart of each page. And by using zigzag as the interior data mechanism, the, the time of programming this thing Unfortunately, we haven't. Uh, we haven't got it finished. But I'm still trying it for some years, trying to get this thing finished. But at least the parts are all there. So that was the hyperorthogonal structure in the generic. Please do not use the terms nanodu or zigzag for any imitations. Code. If you want to program things like these, please give the names of your own because that's what the zigzag are. Trademarks which I've maintained at great expense. <laughs>